Hello and welcome to uh, developing your comedic ventriloquist character's profile with uh, Trish Dunn. He's a new little guy, a big guy actually, I picked up at the latest uh, ventriloquist convention in 2023, hope to see you in 2024. Um, I fell in love with this guy. Some people saw him as Moses and some people saw him as kind of Willie Nelson and I saw him kind of like Chong from Chishin Chong. That might tell you a little bit more about me than it should. But anyway, fell in love with him. But I haven't developed his character yet. So I thought, what better way to, to do it together? We nail, once you're a ventriloquist, you know the importance of lip control and you know the importance of joke writing, but you got to have that golden character. And sometimes you pick up a, a, a puppet or you have a vision for a character you'd like and you're going to have the character made. So let's develop the character together. There's so much more than just a character that looks good. You need to know everything about the character to build on a real, believable personality. A personality or a character that people can relate to that is very believable and you have to know them inside and out is going to generate the most laughs and it's going to be the easiest character to sell to the audience as a separate entity, which is, of course, what we do as ventriloquists. So let's go through this together. There are several steps you do go through in developing the character. Um, we're just going to do the basics. Even before we come up with a nail in the voice, we're going to get the certain demographics. And that's what we're going to do together today. So we've got name. Um, his name is going to be quite posh, like Archibald Reginald. But he's going to go by the name Dude because it's so much easier for him. And his friends because they're probably stoned most of the time. His age, well, he's probably about 75, but to tell you the truth, uh, he doesn't exactly conform. He's probably a sovereign citizen, and, and I don't even think he has a driver's license, so he may not even really know how old he is, but we're going to say he's 75. He was born, what place of birth? He was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, because, hey, what better place to be born? Uh, he grew, and where did he grow up? He grew up in Huntersville, North Carolina. Huntersville, North Carolina, when I was growing up, was quite rural, very nice, uh, very country, and um, really nice place to be, but somebody that's into smoking a lot of weed and peace and love and rock and roll, well, they're probably not going to be too happy in Huntersville, so he uh, left and, and um, went, to, uh, went to California, but we'll, we'll get there. So he grew up in Huntersville, North Carolina. He lived, after he left Huntersville, he went to university in California, UCLA, and he was there for a long time, but he fell in love with the hippie movement, wanted to be more enlightened, so he dropped out of school, and he's lived in California for probably, well, if he's 70-something, 40-something years, but he's recently come back to North Carolina because things have gotten crazy in California, and uh, so that's where he is. Employment is a very important thing you need to, to, to take into consideration. Well, this guy uh, lives on a trust fund and he makes art, kind of like a Hunter Biden. He's, he's got family money and uh, he loves to do artwork and sell it by the, by the ocean, by the Pacific Ocean probably. And, and he just loves to smoke weed and grow his own weed. And he's just a good old guy that loves everybody. And he's not too much into the to the day to day things and paying taxes and such things. His socioeconomic status, like I said, he he lives on a trust fund and and he sells his own artwork. His educational status, well, he dropped out of a he dropped out of a university. Let's see if he's seventy five. Does that mean he would have dropped out in the seventies or the? Yeah, I guess he would have dropped out in the seventies, late sixties. I should I should have run I should have run those numbers, shouldn't I? Uh, but anyway, so he dropped out of UCLA, um, and uh, his uh, marital status, well, a guy like this, he, he, he kind of likes that old song, uh, Love Who You're With, and he's probably had lots of wives living with him up in his trailer, um, <laughs> and he just doesn't want to get tied down with a piece of paper. He just doesn't see the point in that to prove his love to somebody. Um, his home life, he just likes to enjoy life, and he loves everybody and just wants to be nice to people and and, you know, enjoy himself. A uh, brief summary of his life. Like I say, he's a beach bum of California. Um, 
dropped out of UCLA, loved the hippie movement, grows his own smoke, does his own artwork on the side of the ocean and just enjoys life. But now he's back in North Carolina and bless his heart, now he's living with me. So those are the first parts of building your character profile. This is the nerdy stuff. This is the, the boring demographics. These aren't necessarily the things that are gonna make your character funny, but these are the building blocks to when we get to the, the eccentricities of a comedic character that will bring the funny. Think about some of the best characters you see on TV, Saturday Night Live, or some of the sitcoms you like. They have extreme personalities, like on Seinfeld or, or Third Rock, or lots of, they, they have extreme personalities. So you want your character to have some flaws, some personalities, but to get to that point, you've got to have a foundation, a believable, realistic foundation that people can relate to, because those are the best characters. So once again, in summary, this is the basic demographics that you want to, to come up with and make sure you, you can change it as you go. So you want to have a name, you want to have an age, you want to have a place of birth, you want to know where this character grew up, you want to know where they're living now, you want to know their employment history, you have to have a good look at their physical appearance, their socioeconomic status, their political affiliations. Oh, did we character that? I think he's a Bernie Sanders fan. Um, whether he's registered or not, probably not. He's not too much into the technical details. Educational status, marital status, some details about their home life, and a brief summary of the history of their life. That gives you the foundations to know your character inside and out and gives you a foundation to grow upon for the stuff that's going to bring the funny. And we will be pointing out those demographics in our next episode of Developing Your Ventriloquist Character Profile. If you'd like to see a copy of this or a more detailed explanation of what I've covered, it's all covered in my book, Dialogue and Comedy, Riot, Co Dialogue, Comedy and Joke Writing for Dummies. No, real dummies. And it's basically what I think are some of the easiest ways to bring the funny and uh, develop your, your comedic stage presence. I don't cover lip control and things like that in the book. It's all about developing your scripts and comedy and developing your characters. So uh, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you if this book, oh, sorry, the book is available on Amazon and I will try to link it down in the bottom of this uh, video. I hope you find this helpful and I hope you have a great time. If you are unable to get the book and you would still like a copy of a character profile sheet with all of the demographics, shoot me an email at trish at trishdunn.com and I will send you a PDF copy. No problem. Thank you. See you next time.